Hello. Uh, welcome to the e Shikshna program. So this is Professor Umarao from RV College of uh, uh, Engineering, bringing, bringing you the lecture series under the e Shikshna program of VTU. In the course on transmission and uh, uh, distribution. So in my last session, I had uh, detail about the T model for medium lines. So medium lines are between 250 to, sorry, 100 to 250 kilometers. And uh, though these lengths are not like boundaries, it is basically how we model the line. So we saw that in the short line, we neglect the capacitance of the line. And in the medium line, we have to consider it because this capacitance will have uh, a significant impact on uh, determining the efficiency and regulation of the line. So in this class, we will see one more uh, model, which is called as the pi model. So let's see what, what is here. I have the receiving end, right? And the sending end. Now the line admittance is split into half on either side. So I have y by two at the sending end and y by two at the receiving end. And the entire series impedance is lumped into one impedance. If you recollect, what did we do in the T model? In the T model, I had lumped this admittance at the center as y and r and x were split into half on either side. So here we are doing the reverse. r and x are lumped together and uh, the y, the shunt admittance due to the capacitance of the line is split into two. Now, it's called a pi because this pi, right? And uh, now we will see how to draw the phasor diagram, okay? So as I told you, don't memorize the phasor diagram. Learn to draw it step by step. So now I will go through the steps of drawing the phasor diagram as I have shown here. So let's see how I drew this. And uh, where do we start the phasor diagrams? I told you, you always start from the receiving end. Okay, so fine. Let's start with the receiving end voltage. So I draw here, we are... Clear. Yeah. So now you see here, this, the first half of the capacitance, Y by two at the receiving end, the voltage across that is VR. And this capacitance, let us call this current as IC1. So IC1 will lead VR by 90 degrees. Why? Capacitance, the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So you draw IC1. Here, yeah, I have IC1 here leading we are by 90 degrees you draw this next i can draw the receiving end current because i know what is the load at the receiving end current and as i told you the loads are normally lagging so let us take a lagging load and let us draw ir lagging we are by some angle phi r okay this is done now what is il if you see here, this will come back to the circuit diagram, IL. So if I apply KCL at this node, IL is equal to IR plus IC1, right? So I have IR, I have IC1. Here, this is IC1, okay? So when I add the two, I get IL, got it? IL, right? So what's the first step? Draw VR, draw IR at an angle of phi R, Draw IC1 leading VR by 90 degrees, and then you add the two, you get um, you get the current I have shown as IL. Right now I have changed the color. So what is the current flowing through R and X? It is IL. So let us draw the drops across R and X. So we know that the resistive drop is in phase with the current through it. The current through it is IL, so draw ILR, okay? This is ILR. This is in. This is parallel to IL. I have IL here, 
which is the sum of IR and IC1. So I have IR and then I have the drop in the inductance leads the current by 90 degrees. I have IL into X and I have VS. See how easy it is. I have VS, right? So easy, right? Now what is left? I know VS. I have to determine IS. So if I apply KCL at this node, what will be IS? IS will be IL plus IC2. And what is IC2? What is the voltage across this? It is VS. So IC2 will lead VS by 90 degrees. So draw that here. Just see here how I've drawn IC2 here, this one. Here. So IC2 leads VS by 90 degrees. Then I have IS is IL plus IC2. This is IC2. And IL plus IC2 is IS. Here, IS. So that's how you draw the phasor diagrams. Don't memorize it. Please don't memorize it. You'll make mistakes. Very, very, very uh, systematic. So start with VR, draw IR, IC1 leading VR. The sum of the two will give you IL. Then ILR is in phase with IL. And then ILX leads uh, IL by 90 degrees. And then we have VS. And then IC2 leads VS by 90 degrees. And you have IL plus IC2 is equal to IS. So clear. Right? So. Now let's see the uh, ABCD uh, constants. How we uh, uh, derive it. Okay. So here I have marked. I have found the ABCD. AB constants. Let us see how I get at it. How I get at it. So now. Uh, let us get back to the circuit diagram. So here from the diagram, you can see IC1 is VR into Y by 2. VR into Y by 2 is IC1. And IL is IR plus IC1. Clear? And VS, VS will be VR, VR plus IL into R plus JX or Z. R plus JX is Z. So I know VS. And IC2 is VS into Y by 2. So keep all this in mind. Fine. So yes, IC1 is VR into Y by 2. Because the voltage across the capacitor at the receiving end is VR. And IL is R, IR plus IC1. So I have IR and IC1 is VR into Y by 2. Next, VS is VR plus ZIL. Here VS, VR, IL, they're all phasors. So VS is equal to VR plus ZIL. I have VR, I have Z, then I have substituted for IL. Okay, so IL is IR plus VR into Y by 2. So now let me club the terms of VR. So I have VR and this will give me a 1. This will give me a 1. And here I have VR. It is ZY by 2. That is this. Plus I have here ZIR. So I have ZIR. Clear? So from this, from this, I have got VS is equal to VR into 1 plus ZY by 2 plus ZIR. Does this strike a chord in your minds? Yes. VS is equal to AVR plus BIR. Therefore, A is this, the coefficient of VR, which is 1 plus YZ by 2. And the coefficient of IR is Z, and that is B. Yeah, so easy. So I have A is equal to 1 plus YZ by 2. Next, see here at the sending end, IC2 is VS into Y by 2. IC2 is VS into Y by 2. So IS is equal to IL plus IC2. We already know VS. So IS is equal to IL. What is IL? IL is IR plus IC1. That is IR plus VR into Y by 2. So that's what I have done. This is nothing but IL. Next, IC2 is Y by 2 into BS. 
This is Vs. We already derived Vs. Vs is equal to Vr into 1 plus Zy by 2 plus Zir. Okay. So this is Y by 2 into Vs. Now all that I do is I group the terms. So I take Vr. So I have a Y by 2 here. And I have Vr 1 Y by 2. So that is Y by 2. Then Vr into Zy by 2 into Y by 2. So y into zy by 4, this 2 into 2 is 4. Then I collect the terms of ir. So I have here ir, that is 1. And here it is zy by 2. Clear? So again, I can take the y outside here. We are into y into half plus half will be 1. And I'll have zy by 4 plus ir into 1 plus zy by 2. So this is the expression for IS. And we know IS is equal to CVR. So this coefficient of VR is C, which is nothing but just here. I have written it here. Okay. C is equal to Y into 1 plus ZY by 4. And D is 1 plus YZ by 2. C and D. So we have derived the ABCD constants. And then efficiency and regulation, you do it same as before. So regulation will be Vs minus Vr by Vr or Vr0 minus Vr by Vr. We saw these two give you slightly different answers. And efficiency is output by output plus losses. So now let's uh, uh, take up a problem. You know, to uh, illustrate this pi model. So I have a three phase 200 kilometers line delivering a load of 100 megawatts 0.8 PF at uh, PF lags, okay, that is not lace, at 220 uh, kV. The conductor resistance is 0.1 ohms per kilometer and reactance is 0.3 ohms per kilometer. And the line charging admittance is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 more per kilometer. Calculate all the parameters. Okay. So we had done it using the T model. We had done it using the T model. And now let's uh, do it using the pi model. I already did it. I have taken the same question. I already did it using the T model in my previous session. And now let's do it using the Pi model. Okay, I will use the pi model. So R, all this we have done already. Anyway, R is 0.1 ohms, 200 kilometers. It is 20. X is 0.3 into 260 ohms. So Z is 20 plus J 60 ohms. And Y, you have to put a J here because it is the admittance due to capacitance. So the, uh, that is the capacitive susceptance will be positive J. Now I have already derived the uh, formula. So A is one plus YZ by two and B is equal to Z and C is equal to Y into one plus ZY by four and D is equal to A. Simple. So do, do uh, direct calculations. So I get A will be equal to D. Then Z is direct, B is Z. Only here you have to be careful about the uh, computations. And you get C also. I get C. Okay. So first find ABCD. Now it is easy for you to find the sending and voltage and current using ABCD parameters. Instead of from the circuit, you can directly use the ABCD parameters. So we are... It is, uh, uh, what is the KV? So it's uh, 220 KV. So 220 by root three, because remember, we have to solve on upper phase equivalent. So VR is 127 and IR is 328. We had already calculated this. So IR will be PR, PR by three, Okay, receiving end power by 3 because I need the single phase. VR is 127 kV and power factor is 0 0.8. And so you have the, you get the magnitude from that which is 328. And the angle is cos inverse of 0 0.8 which is 36.86. 
and the minus here is because of the lagging current. Clear? Okay. Now, PS is AVR plus BIR. So I have A, then BR. I have taken zero degrees here. Can you tell me why? Yes, because this is the reference. Then I have B and then I have IR. So AVR plus BIR. So you uh, do the calculations. So I, when I multiply, I use the polar uh, form. And when I add, I convert it to rectangular forms and add. And with this, I get Vs is 142.32 at an angle of 5.07 degree kilovolts. So the sending end voltage is the voltage you get from line to neutral into root three. So I get 246.51 kilovolts. That is the sending end voltage. Next, IS is CVR plus DIR. So I substitute for C and uh, VR is the reference and D and uh, IR. I R and I get I S. I get I S. So phi S is the difference between the two angles. So that works out to be 29.25. And the sending end power factor is 0.872 lakh. And the percentage regulation is V S minus V R by V R in 200. That works out to be 12.5. 0.6%. And the sending end power will be three times Vs, Is, cos phi S. All these are phase quantities, Vs and Is. So three, V phase is 142.32 at sending end. Is is 283.53. And cos phi sending end power factor is 0.872. So I get 105.56 megawatts. So this is your percentage efficiency percentage efficiency. Okay, so please remember both T and Pi models are approximate models because I'm trying to represent distributed parameters with lumped parameters. But in the T model, you get an additional node in the center, which is not there in the physical system. Hence, Pi models are very popularly used. Uh, for load flows, for transient stability analysis, for short circuit analysis, and building the bus admittance uh, matrix of the network, et cetera, et cetera, which you will be dealing with in your later power systems courses. Clear? Now let's uh, look at one or two more uh, uh, problems, how to solve. Okay. A 220 kV. 150 uh, MVA, 60 hertz transmission line is 140 kilometers long. So the parameters are given. R is 0 0.09 ohms per kilometer and X is 0.88 ohms per kilometer and Y is equal to 4.1 into 10 to the power of minus 6 Siemens per kilometer. The voltage at the receiving end is 210 kV. That means you are not getting the full voltage. You're not getting 220 kV. You're only having 210 kV at the receiving end. Using the short line model, 140 kilometers is actually medium line. But here we will use the short line model because I have some other objective, what I want to demonstrate. What is the sending end voltage? Just see here, what is the sending end voltage? If the line is supplying rated voltage, and apparent power at 0.85 PF lagging. So apparent power is MVA, remember that. So it is 150 MVA, that is the apparent power. So what would be the sending end voltage if it is 0.8 PF lagging, if it is unity power factor, if it is 0.8 PF leading. So basically I have uh, taken this problem to illustrate to you the effect of the load power factor. 
and in each of these cases find out the voltage regulation and and what is the efficiency when it is supplying 0.8 pf light here so let us see how to do you already know it simple so parameters i have r is 0.12 ohms per kilometer into 140 kilometers that is 16.8 ohms and x is 0.88 ohms per kilometer that is 140 kilometers that is 123.2 ohms and y is equal to 4.1 into 10 to the power of minus 6 anyway i'm going to neglect y i don't need it because i'm not going to use the short line model okay so let's see now let me do the receiving end current. So apparent power S is root 3 VL into IR. Clear? Remember, there is no cos phi. Cos phi is there if you take the power in megawatts. But I'm taking the power in MVA. So cos phi R is not considered. So IR is S out by root 3 VL. S out is 150 MVA. I have root 3. VL is 210 KV. Clear? So I am doing it in the on the line, line to line voltage. So I have the receiving end current is 412 amperes. Now, what I want you to understand is that if I keep my MVA constant, apparent power constant, then power factor does not affect the current. Clear? But if I keep my active power constant, the power factor will affect the current drawn because P is equal to root 3 VL IR cos phi. Right? So as cos phi changes, IR also will change for same value of P. Whereas S is equal to root 3 VL IR. So power factor is not there. So power factor will not affect the magnitude if I am holding the apparent power of constant. Clear? Now, the receiving end per phase voltage, line to neutral voltage is 210 by root 3, which is 121 kV. Now, what is the sending end voltage? So, sending end voltage, I'm going to take uh, the short line model is VR plus IR into Z. IR into Z. So, these are all phasors. Okay, phasors. And so, I have VR. Then IR. Now, why did I take minus 31.8? This is corresponding to 0.85 lag. So don't just simply add this. Huh? Don't just directly add this. There'll be a J here. They're all phasor quantities. Okay. So, and uh, R plus JX is 16.8 plus J, 123.2. That is 158.6. So this is VS. This is per phase, line to neutral voltage. So into root 3, 275 kV. That is the line to line voltage at the sending end. Okay, fine. Now, I can also, uh, yeah, this is just uh, the calculation, uh, what is uh, shown, sending end voltage. Next, at UPF, what do I do? So what will change here if you do at UPF? This minus 31.8 will be zero now because it will be in phase with VR. VR is zero degrees. So therefore, and remember this 412 doesn't change. The magnitude of IR doesn't change because I'm keeping the same apparent power. However, the change in the power factor will affect the angle. So here you see I took minus 31.8. Here the angle is zero degrees for UPF. And this is R plus JX. So I get 137.6. That is 238 kV. Okay. Just compare these two. Compare these two. You see, as the power factor improves, so this is 0.85 and this is, two th this is UPF. So you see, when the power factor improves, the sending end voltage reduces 275 to 238. It reduces. Okay, so which essentially means that for lower power factors, your sending end voltage will be higher. Clear? Because the, it will draw more current. 
and it will cause greater drops in the line. Next. Next, let us take 0.85 PF lead. So instead of being minus 31.8, this becomes plus 31 because the current is leading. I get 191 kV. 191 kV. Okay. So now you see the sending end voltage has become less than the receiving end voltage. Receiving end is 210. Receiving end is 210. Sending end is only 191. Do you recollect what is the name for this? Anybody? Ferranti effect. Ferranti effect. Okay. At leading power factors or at light loads and no load, the sending end voltage becomes less than the receiving end voltage. So now let's calculate the regulation for all the three conditions. We have already calculated the voltages. So for 0.85 lakh, the sending end voltage is 275. So the regulation is 275 minus 210 by 210 into 100. That is 31.1%. And for UPF, it's 238. So it is 13.7%. Just see here, what a drastic improvement in the regulation. And for 0.85 lead, the regulation is negative. Minus 8.7, it becomes negative. So negative regulation means sending end voltage is lesser than receiving end voltage. Yeah. Now I'm still uh, uh, left with finding out efficiency at rated MBA, 0.8 PF lag, 0.8 uh, PF lag. So I have the output power is three VR IR cos theta R or phi R, whatever you want to call. VR is 121, that is 210 by root three. IR is 412, we have found that. And uh, theta R is 0.85. So I get 127 kilowatts. Now, for 0.85 PF lag, I have three. VS is 158.6. We have already calculated. IS is equal to IR because, because why? It's a short line model. And cos theta S, this is the angle of VS and this is the angle of IS. So you see, you have here, um, yes, VS angle is 14.4 and IS angle is minus 31.8, okay? So therefore, angle is 14.4 minus of minus 31.8. So it is 135.7 is the input. So output is 127 by 135.7, 93.6. You can also calculate the input as output plus losses. Losses would simply be 3 into IR squared into R. R is the resistance. You would get the same answer. So the efficiency is 93.6%. So I suggest you calculate the efficiency at UPF and 0.85 PF lead to have an idea. You saw that. The regulation improves with uh, power factor becoming unity and becomes negative when you have a leading power factor. And just do for the efficiency and you'll find how the efficiency also changes. Next, let's consider a three-phase 60 hertz, 345 uh, kV transmission line, 200 kilometers. So we have... Uh, different uh, parameters. Z is equal to 0 0.032 plus J 0.35 ohms and uh, admittance is equal to J 4.2 micro Siemens per kilometer and the full load is 700 megawatts at 95% of the rated voltage and a power factor of 0.99 leading. Okay. So you see the load here it's, it's given in megawatts, not MVA. And the voltage is 95% of the rated voltage. 
right? The rated voltage is 345, so it is 95% of this. And the power factor is 0.99 leading, small lead. 0.99 means angle will be very small. Okay, so find the ABCD parameters using any appropriate transmission line model. And then phase shift between sending and receiving end voltages at full load based on the model you have chosen and the percentage voltage regulation. Clear. So it's a 200 kilometers uh, line, 200 kilometers line. Therefore, you can use a nominal T or a nominal pi model. I have used the pi model here. So Z is Z into 200 kilometers, which is 6.4 plus J 70 ohms. And Y is Y into 200 kilometers because you know, I remember I told you the parameters are always specified on a per kilometer basis. So I have J840 micro uh, Siemens, and this is the ABCD parameters for the pi model. Please do it. You have Z, Y, everything you do it. And this is the answer you get. So this is in rectangular coordinates and this is in polar coordinates. Now, let me draw your attention. This is dimensionless and this has the dimension of impedance and this has the dimension of admittance. B has the dimension of impedance and C has the dimension of admittance and A and D are dimensionless quantities. So you have A, B, C, D. Next. At full load, the line to line receiving end voltage, what was it? The data told you it's 95% of the rated voltage. Rated voltage is 345 into 0.95. So it is 327.8 kilovolts line to line. And so the line to neutral will be 327.8 divided by root 3, which is 189.2 kilovolts line to neutral. So let me take this as the reference. Remember, remember, we always take the receiving end voltage as reference. Fine. Now, I know the receiving end power factor. Power factor is given to be 0.99. So the receiving end power is three times the line to neutral voltage into IR into cos theta. So its angle is leading angle. So minus cos inverse of 0.99, that is minus 8.1 degrees for a leading angle. This is an impedance angle. Impedance angle will be negative. Current angle will be positive for leading. So the receiving end current phasor is P 700 megawatts divided by 3 to, why is this 3? Why is 700 by 3? To get the single phase power. Then the line to neutral voltage is 189.2. Power factor is 0.99. And at an angle of minus theta. Theta is the impedance angle. So since it's leading, the impedance angle is negative, minus 8.1. So it becomes plus 8.1. So I told you for leading angles, leading power factor, the current angle will lead the voltage, 8.1 plus. For lagging, it will be minus, we saw, minus 36.86, minus 31.8, that's all for lagging. For leading, the current will be positive, 8.1, whereas the impedance angle is negative for leading. So IR is 1.25 at an angle of 8.1 degree kilo amperes, kilo amperes. Next, VS is AVR plus BIR, so A is this. VR is 0 degrees, can you see? Because it is the reference. Then B and IR, we just calculated kilo amperes. So I get VS is 199.8 at an angle of 26.1 degrees. So the phase shift along the line is 26.1 degrees. Yeah. Vs is plus 21. So the, the drop should be, you know, minus 21 because the angle of the receiving end is zero. 
So the, the phase angle difference between the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage is whatever that we call 21 degrees. Next regulation, sending end is 199.8, receiving end is 189, 5.6. Now I'm waiting for a question which should strike your mind. Let us see if it has struck you. In the previous case, when I did a leading power factor, I got a negative regulation. But here my regulation is positive. Why? The answer lies in the power factor. See, in that case, the power factor was 0.85. That means the angle was significantly larger. Whereas here the power factor is 0.99 lead, small angle. Okay, so that is the reason why I'm still getting a positive. As the power factor, leading power factor becomes more and more, then you will get negative regulation. Uh, we also saw that the regulation can be defined as V no load minus V full load by V full load. So V no load would be Vs what I'm getting by A, that is 205.76. So I get a slightly higher regulation. 205.76 minus 189.2. So this is just the way regulation is defined. That's all. You can either define it as the first or the second. So the first one will tell you what is currently for the given loading condition, what's the difference between the sending end voltage and receiving end voltage. And the second one tells you that if the receiving end load is thrown off, what would be the rise in the receiving end voltage? If the sending end voltage is kept a constant. That. So these are two different perspectives of regulation. Thank you. So in this uh, session, uh, we saw the pi model of the medium transmission line. And we also saw some numericals. And uh, I clearly illustrated to you how the power factor affects the regulation. So as the power factor lessens, regulation worsens. That means it becomes more. And with leading power factors, after a certain level, you can get negative regulations. That means the Ferranti effect will come into picture.